Hello friends and welcome. I've got a witch doctor guide for you today. He is one of the best supports in the game right now in pub games specifically. In the pro scene, we'll probably see him a little bit in this upcoming TI, but he's always been better in pub games. I think the reason for this is because Paralyzing Cask, Maledict, and his ultimate are easier to use when people are more out of position and don't know how to respond to it, and you can sort of see proof of that in his win rate across the brackets. So in Divine and higher games, he has a 52% win rate, which is honestly still pretty good, but as you go down, it jumps all the way up to like 55%. In Guardian, it's 58%, okay, 57 and a half, content creator exaggeration, whatever. He is one of the highest win rates right now, and uh, I think the highest support at this time. So very good hero if you want to play him. There's a couple different variations of his skill build that you can go for. If this is your first time trying Witch Doctor, or you just want to play a little greedier, I recommend you max Paralyzing Cask first. The reason for this is that it does double damage versus creeps. So if you take it at level one, you can use it to secure the range creep. It will do 100 damage, or if you bounce it around, it'll do a little bit more. Um, that's great. But once it's maxed out, it's going to pick up even more damage per bounce. And so this is a really easy way to push out creep waves or to just jungle camps as you walk between the lanes. So it's a great way to pick up some gold and XP for yourself. And in your pub games, when cores are doing way too much jungling, you know, nothing's happening. This is going to help you shove out lanes to make things happen. And so that's why I think it's great for pubs. You can start with Maledict at level one if you don't really need a way to secure range creeps and you can take good trades. So Maledict on its own will really not do a lot of damage, even though it has some flat, small amounts of damage over time. Mainly, you need to get more damage in after applying Maledict. For you, that's gonna be through right click since if you're taking it at level one, you got nothing else. But it's even better if you have allies near you to throw in spell damage as well. Now Maledict's cast range is a little bit short, uh, so this is a little harder to do versus ranged heroes unless they're short ranged. So this is easiest to take versus melee heroes, and it also allows you to just poke them a couple times. That's not to say you can't use it versus ranged heroes, but it's just a bit harder. One of the more common builds you'll see is pros then maxing Maledict first after taking it at level one, or you know maybe doing something like this. Uh, the reason they max Maledict first is because you get the most damage out of it at that point, uh, but. This ability really works as an amplification of other people's damage. And if you have teammates who are just jungling and are way too passive and not doing anything, then Maledict is gonna feel kind of bad. Now, again, you can combo it with your own Death Ward. That is nice, but Maledict is a much shorter cooldown than Death Ward. And that's why the pros like it, because you just go lane to lane, or you just take keep taking all these small skirmishes. You Maledict, your teammates who are roaming with you, they throw in the spells, they do the damage. So, oh, great, tons of Maledict damage. But you try to do it, and that guy's jungling, that guy's jungling, that guy's jungling. Oh, yeah, okay, Maledict creeps, I guess. It does nothing to creeps. It's very, it's very weak without extra help. You can also max Voodoo Restoration first. It looks something like this usually, and you do this when your lane is a lot harder. You just kind of need to get by to a certain point before you can start playing with other people, and then hopefully you're gonna group a lot with those people, because Voodoo Restoration, once it's maxed out, actually does a ton of healing. The damage part can be a little harder to get out of the laning stage. Um, in the laning stage, it's nice. You can right-click trade people with it. Out of the lane, you usually wanna be a little further back, so maybe we're not getting that, but the heal is really good if you have a bunch of heroes grouped up doing things. Again, go back to that idea. How much do I think my teammates are, you know, quick, 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 let's go get out of the jungle. Uh, so um, I personally don't do this build all too often. I've heard some people swear by it. They really like it. Um, I understand it the least, to be honest with you all. So if you guys want to try it, feel free. But I, you know, especially for your pub games where just there's not a lot going on, I really do think... Um, Paralyzing Cask will allow you to do the most, whether it's with a team, you will still provide a very nice stun, and you can still, for example, you can still take one point in Voodoo Restoration, one point in Maledict, or you can, you know, go double Maledict, double Restoration. Um, I think something like this will still allow you to contribute to a team that is being active, but when they're not being active, you will still be able to enable yourself to get a lot of gold and become powerful. And the reason we wanna get so much gold and experience is because Death Ward is really good. Ever since they changed it to pure damage, this thing just wrecks people. So you wanna hit six as quickly as you can. It's pretty much a free kill anytime you're allowed to channel for like two seconds on the same target, especially if you've hit Maledict, you can even shorten that time down from there. Um, it's just really good, either on your own or working with teammates. And if the game does drag out, max level Death Ward plus some of these talents 
It's just a ridiculous amount of damage, especially if you pick up the Aghanims. So it is definitely a way you can win in the, the late game, just totally on your own as a support. And I think that's why he's nice in pubs. You got good early game impact and potential late game carrying through Death Ward. Talent wise, Maledict AOE makes it a lot easier to land this ability. You can take Voodoo Restoration mana cost reduction. Uh, and I would do that if you're maxing Voodoo Restoration first. But if you're picking it up later, at this point, you probably have some other items to help you with mana regen. So it's not so important to take this talent and the Maledict AOE is a little better. At 15, I like the cask bounces. You can take 300 health if you're really getting burst a lot. And then if you are playing off of your Death Ward and your Aghanims, you're planning to build that, the Death Ward attack range and uh, damage at 25, these are the talents you want. If you're going for a more enabling build, especially if they have tons of ways to cancel your Death Ward channel, then you can go for like Maledict Burst Damage and extra Voodoo Restoration Heal and Damage. For your starting items, Tangos of course, Blood Grenade, really good. Witch Doctor has fantastic kill potential between Paralyzing Cask and Maledict. So you can use Blood Grenade to set that up if you need to, but ideally you would land Maledict first and then use your other abilities or Blood Grenade items, whatever, uh, because then you'll get the most value out of the Maledict. Stats, like Iron Branches, really great since in between our spells, we're just going to be right-clicking to whittle them down, set up for the kill potential, or just, you know, more damage while they're affected by Maledict. Uh, if you need a Sentry, Observers, that's all, you know, standard support stuff. Same with the, the Stick. Now, the reason, like, Stick and Fairy Fire, you kind of want to consider these, is because Witch Doctor likes going for these these uh, kill combos and drawn out fights where it gets it gets pretty close so the extra burst heal from stick or fairy fire is quite nice for you and you can hopefully bait the enemies to stay longer than they should and you like that because that gives more time for maledict uh, for you to add more damage into the maledict with your attacks and then for maledict to proc more to hopefully finish off the kill your abilities are kind of on the shorter range side so boots will help you actually close the gap and land your abilities magic wand classic support item Arcane Boots, very nice, no matter what build you're going, in my opinion, because if you're going Cask first, trying to be greedy, then you're gonna need more mana, and you just throw out the Cask to farm, Arcane Boots to top it up. If you actually have a team who's going to be aggressive with you, then you need mana, and they need mana so that we can do things, so Arcane Boots kind of solves that issue. And if you want for the heal build, then you just need mana, because you can convert that to health. So Arcane Boots, again, kind of solves that issue. I think it's a great item for him. Aghanim Shard will give you the ability Voodoo Switcheroo, where you will become a a death ward for a few seconds so it is a great survivability item because you just disappear off the map and you can't be killed for those few seconds but it's also a fantastic dps item because it is death ward with 40 less attack speed so it's a little bit worse but it is still shooting out the pure damage shots and it does a lot of damage so now you have your ultimate and Voodoo Switcheroo, which you can use defensively or aggressively. Besides that, it just kind of depends on the game. Aghanims, of course, will make your ultimate very strong, but you do not have to always build Aghanims right away because all right, we can still support. Witch Doctor is still a totally normal support. So if you need like the Four Staff, the Solar Crest, those are totally fine. You are channeling your abilities. So Glimmer Cape can be quite nice and Magic Resistance or Armor, you are providing a heal. So when you provide resistances, I to yourself or your allies you are boosting the effective hp of the heal you provide uh, something like aether lens because you do have short attack or sh short cast range can help uh, especially with the channeling from further back in the fights because your ultimate is channeled and it can be canceled so if you can stand further back that is quite nice uh Pavis, not so common, but occasionally I see Pavise as a first item before something like Shard, uh, especially when you are going for a uh, healing build first. So like by level seven or eight, heal is maxed out. Then you need a lot of mana regen for that. So Arcane Boots and Pavise are fantastic mana regen items. So you'll sometimes see those combo together. If your team needs Spirit Vessel, Witch Doctor can be a decent builder for it. I don't love it because I usually think of him like trying to stay in the back line and Spirit Vessel, sometimes you gotta be a little closer, but it does does combo very nicely with Maledict. If you land Maledict and then Spirit Vessel, you're going to have a lot of damage in. If your team needs it, then, you know, you need it. Uh, and it does provide you mana regen, some armor, things we said he likes. So not a bad item for him. It's a very aggressive path, but uh, I, I would opt for these other items unless you have a clear need for Spirit Vessel. Oh, I almost forgot to include BKB in here, especially if you've built Aghanims and it's getting into that late game. Just being able to channel your ult can be very powerful, and there's not really a better item for that than BKB. Now, of course, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. So if your ultimate is doing a ton of work, then consider BKB. 
For neutral items, anything that helps with mana regen, I think is great. And then beyond that, survivability. A couple more tips, tricks, and random things you may want to know about Witch Doctor. This is about as far as paralyzing cast can bounce. So if you get a rough feel for that, you know when you can get the bounce. If you don't get any bounces, uh, then it's 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 a lot worse. It's best when heroes are nearby and you get a ton of bounces in between because it essentially chain stuns them. Each individual stun is not very long, but when it's bouncing between two heroes, that's the best. And in the laning stage, you want to be careful when the full creep wave is still alive because this paralyzing cask just bounces randomly. It doesn't prioritize heroes. However, as creeps die off, then now we're kind of guaranteeing the, the bounces. So especially when just the range creep is left or just one melee creep is left go ahead and throw the cask on the hero it will bounce to that one remaining creep and then bounce back to that hero and then if you have more levels it'll just keep going until the creep eventually dies so for example now would be a great time for me to stun beastmaster and go for the you didn't see i secured that guys i secured that last hit and it bounced back to beastmaster so we get the maximum value out of stun and secure the range creep voodoo restoration has a flat mana cost to turn on and then a mana per second cost to sustain it so especially in the early game when you don't have a ton of mana you want to try to just turn it on when it's needed and keep it on for as long as possible as long as it's needed you don't want to keep turning on and off voodoo restoration because you're just going to keep using that mana cost activation without actually getting much healing maledict does not work like orchid malevolence orchid just checks how much damage you have dealt to a target while it's active and then does 30 percent extra based on whatever that damage was maledict does an equation and it checks whatever current health the hero is at so like this beastmaster is at full health so i'm going to use maledict i'm going to dag in him and now it sees okay 670 minus whatever the current health is now we're going to use that you know percentage of that to do the extra burst damage however if a target actually heals during maledict so let's say this Beastmaster takes a bit of damage. He's at 500 about. And I apply Maledict to him. And I do some damage. But now, he's going to get healed by Mech. He's actually above the original threshold of when I applied Maledict. So Maledict is going to do nothing. It doesn't care that I dealt some damage to him. It only cares about whatever the difference is between that initial starting point and whatever the hero's current health is. It's a very roundabout way of saying apply Maledict and then do damage. Burst heals counter Maledict. Maledict cannot be dispelled, but it does do magic damage. So if they have a bunch of magic resistance, then Maledict will do less damage. You can turn Voodoo Restoration on and off while channeling without canceling your channel. Voodoo Switcheroo lasts for three seconds and there is no way to cancel this. It will last the full duration before you can pop out again. Try to abuse tree lines and high ground vision to keep yourself alive while channeling uh, in team fights and in solo pickoffs. If an enemy hero has no way to cancel your channel, then as long as they're close to you and they can't get out of the death ward range, you only need a few seconds to kill someone. So those are pretty free kills. If they do have an escape, you know, probably don't use it unless you have people to help you lock them down. And if they have a way to cancel your channel, you might still be able to get a kill on them. Uh, for example, if they're coming up high ground and they don't see you there, you can surprise them, just hit them with the, the Maledict, the stun, and then immediately start channeling. And even if they want to run up and then cancel your channel, it's kind of too late. In the few seconds that it takes, they've already taken too much damage that even as they cancel you, uh, your Maledict might still finish them off like this. Your Death Ward has 50% bonus accuracy, so even against heroes with high evasion, you will still hit fairly often. Uh-oh, blade mail meta, I'm gonna die. Nah, you don't get affected by it because all the damage comes from Death Ward, not you, so nothing is reflected to you. This also means that you can do damage while Aeon Disc is active. So for example, if you're channeling and then it procs, you will still do damage. A second time, in case you didn't believe me. Oh no, they've got a Crimson Guard. Ah, just kidding, guys. It does not affect your Death Ward damage at all. That's all I've got for you. He is a very good hero right now. I highly recommend you give him a shot if you are interested in winning some MMR. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in another video.